Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video. And did you know that Mackinac National Park has military origins? The second national park in the country was created in 1875, largely because there was a military fort in the area to manage it. But 20 years later, the fort was deactivated and the national park was transferred to the state of Michigan, where today it is Mackinac Island State Park. Anyway, that's the first of many facts about our amazing national parks here in the United States I'm going to share with you in this video today in honor of our National Park Service turning 100 101 this year. There are some pretty famous sites that you might not even know are run by the National Park Service. For instance, the Statue of Liberty, the location of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, and Alcatraz Island are the same as national parks to the Park Service. Mount Rushmore National Memorial counts as a national park too. Fun fact, the presidents were originally going to be depicted in the monument from waist up but there wasn't enough money. There's also a leprosy colony that's a national park in Kalapapa, Hawaii. It was started in the 1860s and people were exiled there. As of 2015, there were six people still living there voluntarily. America's first mountain man possibly has a history in a current national park, Grand Teton in Wyoming. His name was John Coulter and he was on the Lewis and Clark expedition, a stone engraved with John Coulter and 1808, found in 1931 has led some to believe that he went through Grand Teton. At 8.3 million acres, the largest national park in the U.S. is Wrangell St. Elias National Park in Alaska. That's a greater area than nine states have. Its biggest glacier is Hubbard, named after the first president of the National Geographic Society. Between 1940 and 1976, a man named Roy Sullivan was a park ranger at Shenandoah National Park, and while working there, he was hit by lightning seven times. The odds of that happening happening to you are 4.15 in 100 nonillion. Also, he did not die of those lightning strikes. He did die later because, you know, that's... Well, it's the fate facing us all. In 1917, a woman went into the forests of Rocky Mountain Park twice to act as a modern Eve, followed by a fictional Adam, in a publicity stunt. She dressed like a cavewoman and headed into the woods in front of a crowd of about 2,000 the second time. But it turned out she just went and stayed at a lodge in the park. At Zion National Park, you can find the Zion Snail, which is one-eighth of an inch in size, but it has the biggest foot-to-body ratio of any snail breed. And you know what they say about snails with relatively large feet mostly found in the Zion National Park. But speaking of cool animals found in national parks, in the spring of 2006 on Santa Cruz Island in the Channel Islands National Park in California, a bald eagle chick hatched without human assistance. It was the first to do so in that area. And Pinnacles National Park in California has the most bee species per unit of area of anywhere studied. It has about 400 in total. A slightly creepier national park critter, the Everglades has a major python invasion problem. The park is about 6,100 square square kilometers, or 2,400 square miles, and there are an estimated 10,000 pythons in the area. Pythons aren't native to the area. It's believed that they got their start when people who had pythons as pets realized, you know, that they had pythons as pets, and uh, instead of, I don't know, sending them back to python land, they chose to release them into the Everglades. Anyway, the pythons are now a major problem for the small mammals who once lived peacefully in the park. Moving on to plant life that's being threatened, saguaro cacti can be overtaken by species species like buffalo grass, which also increases the risk of wildfire. So Saguaro National Park in Arizona depends on the National Park Service and volunteers at monthly buffalo grass polls. Yosemite in California had a bid in for the 1932 Winter Olympics. It didn't work out, but an ice skating rink, ski jump, and toboggan run were built as part of the endeavor. By the way, President Theodore Roosevelt visited Yosemite in 1903. This prompted him, with encouragement from naturalist John Muir, the park's establisher, to expand it, a law he signed in 1903. And speaking of Teddy, he has his own national park in North Dakota. He initially came to the area to hunt bison, but he eventually bought property there, and after his wife and mother died, he moved there for good. Another famous person with national park associations? Dolly Parton. She was named an official ambassador at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee and North Carolina. Further west is Glacier National Park in Montana. Triple Divide Peak is part of the park, and it actually contributes water to up to three oceans, the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Arctic. The Rockwell 
walls in the canyons of Grand Canyon National Park are actually older than dinosaurs, so you won't find any dinosaur bones there, but many other types of fossils have been found. And by the way, the only place in the U.S. that still gets its mail by pack mule is in the Grand Canyon. There's a town there called Supai Village, and since there's no road leading to it, mail trucks can't get in. There are many cypress trees at Congaree National Park in South Carolina. Legend has it that the odd-looking tree bases transform into wood elves at night. Probably the most famous park on this list is Yellowstone in Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. The park itself was established in 1872, before any of those were states. It was the world's first national park. And of course, Yellowstone is home to Old Faithful, a geyser that erupts about 15 times per day. Experts can predict when it will erupt within 10 minutes with 90% accuracy. The arches in Utah's Arches National Park change a lot. Like, for instance, in November of 1940, Skyline Arch doubled in size in an instant when a big rock fell down from within the current arch. And speaking of rocks, in Acadia National Park in Maine, there are roads lined with stones of various sizes acting as guardrails, and because John D. Rockefeller Jr. financed this project, the stones are known as Rockefeller's Teeth. <laughs> Olympic National Park in Washington State was a very boring lookout point during World War II. It was established as one in case of attacks from the Pacific, but of course none ever happened. A Russian shipwreck did wash up there in 1943, though, which caused some excitement. Man, if I ever get drafted, please put me at the Olympic National Park lookout. I was not made for combat. A couple facts you might not know about the highest mountain in North America, known as Denali. It's in Alaska. It's also a national park. But you may have heard it known as McKinley. From 1975 through 2015, it was recognized by the U.S. government as McKinley and Alaska's state government as Denali, its original name. Finally, in 2015, it was officially renamed by the U.S. government, although on the campaign trail, Trump promised to re-rename it McKinley. So, we'll see. Anyway, second fact you might not know about Denali, I was dumped on that mountain by a girl I loved very much. It was brutal. Anyway, let's move on to another Alaskan national park, Kenai Fjords, which also includes parts of the Harding Ice Field. In total, the ice field and its glaciers are around 700 square miles. For a while, many of the people who tried to cross the field either failed or it took over a week. In 1983, though, two men made it in four days, 21 hours. By 2020, it probably only gonna take like five minutes because, you know, there won't be an ice field. Isle Royale National Park in Michigan is home to a very interesting island. Moose Boulder is technically a micro island in a pond, on an island, in a lake, on an island, in a lake. It's believed the only island with this specific honor in the world. On New Year's Eve of 2016, a large piece of lava fell into the ocean at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, which required them to close their viewing area. The staff had to scramble and put together a new viewing area, which they did impressively by January 3rd. And finally, I returned to my salon to tell you about Dr. John Cragen, who tried to turn Mammoth Cave in Kentucky into a tuberculosis hospital. He had 10 cottages constructed inside the cave for patients, thinking maybe the cave air would be better for them. This only went on for a few months between 1842 and 1843, and every patient died. Five down in the cave, then the rest after they left. Also, Dr. John Cragen himself eventually died of tuberculosis in 1849. Ugh, tuberculosis was the worst, and it continues to be the worst in much of the world, so support anti-TB efforts if you can. Anyway, thank you for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these lovely people. Let me know in comments what your favorite national park is. Mine is not Denali! And as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome. Actually, Denali is lovely. I just, you know, it's a personal thing.